God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. So I'll ask you to turn around. <coughs> so for our liturgy today, we'll begin here. Uh, then uh, I'll bless the palms. So I'll come around, you'll hold them up like this as I come around blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we, g we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his town city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. May you raise your, your branches now. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. 
Life, uh, uh, justthenews.com, uh, has a bombshell uh, report from Durham today. We're now getting um, the things are beginning to come nine. together in terms yeah. of the work that John Durham has been doing as a special uh, prosecutor. Well, anyway, so he well, unveiled no, what is a, a smoking gun you know, FBI. to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowd proclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of hum humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to, you, to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is, My God, my God, oh, why have you abandoned me?
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Because of the length of the reading of the Passion of our Lord, we'd ask that you all please be seated. You can find the text in the Missalette. The crowd is labeled as a C, and that would be when you would all answer. The Passion of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread and blessing it and gave it to them saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you just as my Father has conferred one on me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. 
and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you all like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, no nothing. nothing. They replied, he said to them, but now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And the one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then he said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, it is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony as he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer, he returned to his disciples. He found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priest and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come after, have you come out as after a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day, I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she said to him, she looked intently at him and said, This man too is with him. But he denied it, staying, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Surely this man too is with him, for he is also a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out 
and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prosify, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When the day came, the council of the elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before the Sanhedrin. They said, If If you you are are the the Christ, Christ, tell tell us. us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all ask, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What What further further need need have we for testimony? testimony? We We have have heard it from his own mouth. mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We We found this man misleading misleading our people. people. He He opposes the the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is Christ, the king. king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said in reply to him, You say so. Then Pilate addressed the chief priest and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all of Judea, from Galilee where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. Upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting your people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have found this man guilty, and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But they all together, they shouted out, Away Away with with this man, man. release Release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who had come in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, 
the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place of the skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have condemned, been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus Christ called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent without a doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breast. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtu virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was waiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. When they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
two little lines of the Passion narrative by St. Luke have my attention. They form a sort of parenthesis around the largest part of Jesus' Passion. The first one comes in the part about, about the supper Jesus shared with his chosen disciples on the night before his death. Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. Make memory of me, Jesus says, by doing what I am now doing. Then, toward the end of the Passion narrative, as Jesus hangs in agony upon the cross, one of the criminals crucified with him scolds the other for reviling Jesus and says, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. Do this in memory of me. What is this remembering? First, this remembering is not a simple, a simple calling to mind a person or place from the past. The good thief, as we call him, was not asking Jesus to remember tomorrow who he talked to today. He means, remember that we have something in common, some goodness, some mercy, some kindness. And when you enter upon your reign, make a place for me. I have no one to hope in but you. The same is true of the remembering Jesus invites us to do in the breaking of the bread. The Eucharistic prayer has never been just to remember as a past event what Jesus did on the night before he gave himself up for us on the cross. It has always been a way, the way, the Son of God himself showed us. It has always been the way to strengthen the living communion between us and the risen Lord. The memory that we make of Jesus, like the memory Jesus makes of the good thief, is the renewal of a love so strong that it saves us from the eternal loneliness of death. Thanks be to God. Let us now arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men for our salvation came down from heaven. 
the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. For church leaders and people of faith throughout the world, that these final days of Lent help us to be mindful of God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, for peace, and those suffering from wars, especially refugees, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and for all serving the Lord in this special way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from illness and pain, for medical personnel and caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and those without adequate food or housing, for social workers and all who share with the less fortunate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose Parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially Dick Wisser, who passed away this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of the Mary Nash family, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our presentation song is number 411, Jesus the Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near, be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ambrose and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, right. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
It's not too late to sign up for the parish directory. See the counter in the vestibule for details on how to sign up online or call the office. Save the date for the St. Ambrose first annual golf classic tournament on Saturday, July 16th at 9 a.m. at Eastern Hills Golf Course. If you or your business would like to buy a hole or donate prizes for this worthwhile event, please call the office. Holy Thursday Mass will be at 7 p.m. with the washing of the feet. The Good Friday service will include the Stations of the Cross at 12.30 p.m. with veneration of the cross at 1 p.m. The Easter Vigil will begin at 9 p.m. on Holy Saturday. Easter Sunday Masses are at 9 a.m. and 11.15 a.m. Pontifical Collection to Help Christians in the Holy Land is on Good Friday. And again, this is very important. Please see the sign-up sheets for the upcoming Holy Week Masses in the vestibule. We need all, all kinds of people, but especially to have your feet washed and gift bearers. And finally, thank you to the funeral lunch workers. The luncheons for the families have been delicious and are much appreciated. Thank you and have a great week. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> so as you realize, uh, this weekend's celebration, we are, en we are entering the culmination. Holy Week begins. So let us have our finishing power. If, if you have not really, you still have a few days to finish with power. So on Tuesday, we'll have the Christmas Mass at the cathedral. Then on Thursday, we'll have our Holy Thursday, the, the Easter Triduum. It's called Easter Triduum, but it's actually one. So Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, Resurrection. So just b before I forget, uh, Bishop has a message for all of us, and it is in the bulletin. So be sure to, to, ha to have a bulletin today. And I hope to see all of you for the Holy Week. Let us now stand. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with gratitude and love. For the precious gift of the Most Holy Eucharist to be our spiritual food and drink for our journey of faith. And kindle within us the fire of your love and inspire within us the desire to be like Jesus, who wants salvation and who redeemed us with sin and death. Help us, O Spirit of mercy, to be poured out in charity so that we can love as Jesus loves in all that we think, say, and do. May you, O Spirit of truth, give us the courage to be joyful witnesses to Jesus in our lives and always speak the truth in love. Make our lives and homes places where saints are formed and where holy vocations to the priesthood, consecrated life and sacrament of marriage is fostered. Help us, O Spirit of compassion, to see all those who suffer and are in need as you see them, as sisters and brothers in Christ. May St. Augustine, our diocesan patron, Lead our restless hearts to find rest in you, and may Mary, the mother of the church, intercede for us, and lead us always to the heart of our divine Son. Come, Holy Spirit, come into our lives, our parish, and our diocese, and lead us always to live our lives according to your holy will, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to, to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Bow your heads for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Our closing song is number 715, Lift High the Cross. Mm -hmm.